When you get in your car, you're going to come out and you're going to look around your car because you've got around your car, you have what they call a blind zone. Here's your car, right? You've got, you're sitting in your car here and you have a, what they call a blind zone or a footprint. All of this footprint is what you cannot see when you're sitting in your car. That's the asphalt below you. If I were to put one of you out here in one of these driving cars and have another student walk behind him and say, look in your rearview mirror and tell me when you can see their feet, an average car, it'll be 65 feet before you can see them. That's your footprint behind you. This is called your blind zone. So you're sitting in a parking lot with a lot of children in and out a restaurant, you've got this whole area around your car you can't see sitting in your car. You know what I'm saying? So you come out to your car and you look around and you see who's around you. Don't just back out. Children are small. You just you need to look around you. You need to check before you do anything. Don't just look in your rear view mirror and think, oh, I got this, because there could be a child behind you. The first thing you do when you walk out to get in your car, you need to check your car out. See that if you've got a flat tire or a low tire or a damaged tire. When you're driving down the road, you really can't tell where your car is. Now, if you're having trouble doing what they call tracking your car, which means you don't know exactly where you are in the lane, are any of you all having trouble? Maybe you always seem to hug the right side or hug the left side, I can tell you exactly how to correct that. The problem with that, if you're having trouble tracking your car, it's because you are looking too close to your car. When you're driving, it's just like walking. You have to look out 20 seconds, quarter mile, in order to get perspective. Just as if I were to try to walk in a straight line looking down at my feet, you can't do it. Or looking up in the air, you can't do it. You have to look straight out. So if you're having trouble tracking, it's because you're not looking up. You've got to look up and look out in order to get perspective. But I'm going to show you reference points that's going to help you know exactly where your car is at all times. Because you actually have different positions in your lane. You're in this big lane, right? You have different positions in there. You can be in the center of your lane. That would be position one. And you're going to most of the time be in position one, right? You can be in the side of your lane. Can you think of times when you're going to be on the right side? When we, yeah, when there's a hazard on the left or a blind curve or blind hill in a rural area. You're going to want to be over here always, always. You go around a blind curve, blind hill, be on your side of the road because you don't have any guarantee the other guy will be. Or you might be over here on the left. This is lane position three. Over on the left-hand side, when would, when would there be a time that you would do this? If there's a hazard on the right-hand side. Yeah, or maybe even a pedestrian or a bicycle, okay? Someone, something that you can share the lane with. Now, you can share the lane with anything that is propelled by human motion. So you can share the lane with a skateboard, a scooter, a bicycle. That means as long as you give them three feet, you can still be in the lane. So you might want to be all the way over in this left-hand side, right? Or it could be a pothole, anything. Uh, a bad shoulder sometimes, you know, out in the country, the shoulders are bad. Now I'm going to tell you how to know where you are in your lane. When you're in this lane position one right here, you have uh, five reference points on your car. Your reference points, like I said, are points you can see on your car that show you where you are in relationship to the road you can't see. Your reference points are the center of your car, your two side mirrors, and your back door handles. Those are the reference points that we use. Now, you can't see your back door handles, right? But you know where they are. So when you want to be in the center of your lane and you want to check, looking at your this line, now this is perspective, this line will look like it runs right through the center of the passenger side of the hood. It's just right to the center of your car. It looks like it runs right through your passenger. You are in the center of your lane, okay? Now, you can't drive looking at that line. So you're going to glance over there and you can see where you are, right? But when you're driving, the line of sight is your path of travel. You're looking up, right? But say you have to get way over for a blind curve and you can't really tell. There's mailboxes over here and you're 
worried about hitting that mailbox. When you, when this white line is running right dead center through the middle of your car, you still have six inches on this side. You can get all the way over to where that white line's running right through the center of your car. You're still not off the road. And when you're way over here, because there's somebody over here, but you don't want to get in this lane because of oncoming traffic, this line here will appear to run right underneath your left side view mirror, or that sometimes they will say right through your uh, headlight, but you can't see your headlight. You can see your left mirror. It runs right underneath your left mirror. You still have six inches on this side before you are over. Now your front reference points, you're pulling into a parking spot, your front reference point is going to be the front mirrors. So you're pulling into a parking spot in a grocery store and you can't tell how close you are to this car over here. When, you're, when this curb or this line that's the, the definition of the end of your parking spot appears to run right under your mirrors, you have six inches. Now this is approximate. If you drive a car like mine, mine's a little bit longer in the front. If I do that, then I'm up on that curb. You have to get in your driveway and pull your car up and get out and look. But it's approximate, okay? So I know for my car, I need to actually just be right in front of my mirrors to be that distance. When you are backing into a parking spot, you want this line to run through your back door handles. You are still six inches from the curb. Those are what you call reference spots. So you're, you're down in Carytown and you're parallel parking. Now when you're parallel parking, you need to be six to 12 inches from the curb. So you can get in here and you can parallel park and you can see that the curb appears to run right through the middle of your car, you're fine. You can also use these reference points as parking tools, okay? You're gonna park in this, you're gonna back into this parking space. What you wanna do is back up until your back bumper is in the middle of the lane beside the one you're going in. Here's the lane you're going in. You're gonna back your car up until your back door handle is lined up to this first line and then cut the wheels all the way and it will take you right into the center of that thing. So you use that back reference point and just turn and cut back in. The same is true with pulling in. When you're pulling in, the reference point is gonna be your mirror lining up to this first line. So learn your reference points on your car. Now they vary a little bit with your car, but when you're driving your car, you will learn that. Now some people don't need reference points. My personal opinion of driving has a lot to do with your vision. If you have really good vision, which, you know, some, <laughs> there's several people in my family have 22 vision, you have really good depth perception and you may not need reference points. But if you have a little trouble figuring things out, reference points are a great aid for you to use. The laws in Virginia, one of the laws this year that has really been, you probably have seen it advertised a lot because they're making a big deal out of it, it's called the move over law. Has anybody heard of the move over law? Do you all know what the move over law is? Do you, what is the move over law? I don't know what it is. Just heard it. You've heard them speak of it? Well, the move over law states this. If you are driving an, an emergency vehicle that includes a policeman, or a vehicle with lights flashing and sirens on comes up behind you, the move over law states that you must pull over to the side and stop and let that vehicle pass. Now that works great when you're out on a two lane road. If you're out on a rural road and there's an emergency vehicle behind you, pull on the shoulder and let them go by. But when you're sitting in an intersection and you're in the left hand lane and an emergency vehicle comes up behind you, what would you do then? Well, let me tell you what you do not want to do. Do not go left. Do not go into the left lane into oncoming traffic. Do not make a left-hand turn. You want to, as much as possible, get to the right. Now, emergency vehicles, when they're coming to an intersection, they're going to be changing that light at most of the major intersections, right? They're sending a signal to change that light to green so that they can go through. So if you're in a situation where it's heavy traffic, the best thing for you to do is try to move over to the right as much as possible. 
or be still and let the emergency vehicle maneuver around you if you cannot make a space for yourself. You'll notice people will begin to separate and let them get by, but never go to the left. You may, you are permitted by law, if you're the first person at that intersection, you may make a right-hand turn and then pull over onto the shoulder. Or if you are in a roundabout, you know what I'm talking about? A traffic circle, go through the circle and then pull over after you get on the other side of the circle. That's the first half of the move over law. The second half of the move over law says that if you are on a multi-lane road, several lanes traveling in the same direction, you know, an interstate or whatever, and there's several lanes in the same direction, and there is flashing lights of any kind. Somebody is hauling a car, there's, you know, um, a, a construction worker, or if it's a policeman, whatever it is, if there's flashing lights on that shoulder, you are, if possible, supposed to change lanes and leave uh, the lane adjacent to the accident or the flashing lights, leave them that lane empty, okay? That's so you don't run over those guys. You know, there's a lot of uh, those policemen that are involved in accidents because they've pulled somebody over on the side of the road. So if possible, now the, the law does say if possible. If you cannot pull over, then there's nothing you can do about it. But if you can, try to leave them. That's the move over law. Try to leave them that space. The state of Virginia has a point system on their driver's license and a demerit system. When you get your driver's license from DMV, you have zero points. Every year that you drive without a violation, you get one point on your driver's license, up to five positive points. You can never have more than five positive points. Whenever you have a moving violation, you will be given demerit points and you will lose your positive points. There are varying different offenses that carry different points. For example, a reckless driving ticket, which can be a felony also, is six demerit points and it stays on your record for 11 years. Now that's your record. The demerit points on your license will be removed after two years. Demerit points only stay on your driver's license for two years, but they stay on your record longer than that. A DUI and a reckless driving offense are first class misdemeanors. They will stay on your record for 11 years. Did you know that in the state of Virginia, you must always signal? If you're in the right turn lane and you're going right, you must signal. If you're in the left turn lane and you're going left, you must signal. If you are changing lanes, you must signal. Anytime you are going to go in a different direction in Virginia, you must signal. Always be sure you do. If you are parked on the edge of, of a road, parallel parked, and you pull out without signaling, that's a four-point violation, and it stays on your record for three years. For more information about moving violation and point assessments, you may call DMV at 804-497-7100 for the information, or you can get a brochure from DMV by writing Virginia Department of Motor Vehicles, P.O. Box 27412, Richmond, Virginia, 23269. Um, another law that is in Virginia that I don't know if you're aware of is called the Good Samaritan Law. Does anybody know what that is? The Good Samaritan Law states this. If you are the first person at the scene of an accident, the guy in front of you is involved in an accident, or you're the first person there, you must by law stop. You stop, you turn off the vehicles, you check on the occupants. If they're, you know, bleeding and you want to stop the bleeding, yes, but do not do extensive first aid. You know, you're not a medical personnel and you haven't been called to the scene for that capacity. But if you stop, you turn off the thing, you call for help and you stay with them until help arrives. That's your legal responsibility. You must do that. That's called the Good Samaritan Law. And yes, there are extenuations for your protection under that law that I'm not going to go into in this class, but it's a very elaborate law. To know all of what that law states, you go into this website, www.dmvnow.com. This website right here will anything you want to know.
There's also what they call the pickup truck law in Virginia. What the pickup truck law says is that you must be 16 years of age or older in order to ride in the back of a pickup truck. Another one of the um, administrative laws in Virginia, in Virginia we have admin, admin per se laws. These are laws that can result in an administrative suspension of your driver's license. One of those is what they call the implied consent law. The implied consent law says that you are implying that you will consent to a BAC test if you are asked to take one. Now, a blood alcohol concentration test can be administered on the roadside by a policeman where you blow into a tube and it registers how much alcohol content is in your blood. If you refuse to take that test, an administrative law, the implied consent law, automatically kicks in and your license is suspended for a year for refusal to take that test. That's called the implied consent law. In Virginia, it is also against the law to be driving in the rain with your windshield wipers on without your lights on. That's a law in Virginia. You must turn on your lights whenever you are using your windshield. It is against the law in Virginia to have snow on the top of your car accumulated because that thing can blow off and be a hazard for the person behind you. It's against the law to do that. It is against the law in Virginia to ever cross over a solid line of any color. So if you're making a left-hand turn and you miss those dotted lines, you have broken a law in Virginia. It is against the law in Virginia to ever drive on the shoulder. You may not cross over onto his shoulder in order to pass on the right or drive for any reason other than an emergency. In the case of a funeral, you must always yield to a funeral. Now, it used to be that the lights were on and you could tell it was a funeral procession, but now because everyone drives with their daylight running lights, which is a good idea, they will have police in front sometimes as many as two police cars with flashing lights and there will be someone at the end of that funeral procession. You may never get into the middle of that. You must always yield in respect to a funeral procession. In Virginia, we have a reckless driving law, which is either a felony or a misdemeanor. Reckless driving means speeding in excess of 80 miles per hour. That is a first class misdemeanor and it will stay on your record for 11 years. Reckless driving offense carries $250 fine, first offense. Reckless driving is also considered speeding 20 miles an hour or more above the posted speed limit. Reckless driving is racing. Reckless driving is passing or overtaking an emergency vehicle. Reckless driving is passing a school bus. Reckless driving includes passing on the crest of a hill. Reckless driving is passing at a railroad crossing. Reckless driving is passing two vehicles abreast. Reckless driving is driving too fast for the road conditions, which means you can get a reckless driving ticket going under the speed limit if the road conditions or the traffic conditions are not conducive to that speed. The speed limit laws is the ultimate speed or the maximum speed you can go. That is in dry asphalt, normal traffic conditions. Reckless driving is failing to give a proper signal. Reckless driving includes faulty equipment, faulty brakes, or improper control. Reckless driving is driving carelessly or recklessly on parking lots. Reckless driving also includes generally reckless driving. So reckless driving is a serious offense. It is a first class misdemeanor and in some counties in the state of Virginia it is mandatory three days jail time. You do not want to get a reckless driving ticket.